Today is the day that we get to talk about The Witcher 3 and its next gen upgrade. I wanted to make this video back in December when the next gen port was released but I was moving cows and couldn't find the time. And about a week ago I was looking through my library trying to find something to play and there Geralt was staring at me judging me for not playing the port or the expansions. So I've played around 40 hours or so and wanted to give you some thoughts and opinions on whether the next gen port is a great way for new players to experience the game as well as feeling fresh enough for old players to hop back in. But first, if you are new here and you like content around video game discussions and reviews, please like and subscribe to the channel. It means a lot and it will do wonders for the growth of the channel. Thanks a bunch. Now, I wanted to go over my history with The Witcher as I think it's important for you to know that I wasn't much of a fan of the game. Back in 2015, I was still slow on understanding the greatness of RPG games. Yeah, I had played Skyrim, but didn't really understand it and I wasn't used to games that were non-linear. That year, I was playing FIFA, Batman Arkham Knight and the legendary Gears of War Ultimate Edition, but this year has to be the year that I began to love RPGs as I had Dying Light, The Witcher 3 and Fallout 4 all pre-ordered. Now I never completed The Witcher 3 until a few years back and this is because I have the attention span of a 6 year old. As soon as another game gets my attention I immediately forget my other games and now I have a backlog of unfinished games that I'm terrified to look at. The funny thing is that when I returned to The Witcher 3 I only had the final quest to do. I literally booted up the game and I was in the middle of a battle, got back to grips with the combat and the end credits rolled around about 20 minutes after. So when I learned that there was going to be a next gen upgrade, this was the perfect opportunity to revisit the game with a different mindset and to see what improvements could be made to enhance the experience. So I got the game of the year edition so I could play the expansions as well. It's quite cheap now, I think I paid around £7 when it was on sale on the PS store. I'm going to go over some of the changes that have been added to the game and what settings I've been playing on. So the first change is the performance and the fidelity modes. I've been playing on performance mode on my PS5 which improves the frame rate to 60fps. In all honesty I play all my games on performance mode and it's not because I dislike fidelity mode or anything. Ray tracing and improved visuals are great but in a game focused on combat performance is key. It also helps with our split second decisions and movements and I prefer the buttery smoothness of 60fps. Now the next and one of the most important additions to the game is the new camera positioning. It's now a more closer, more intimate over the shoulder view when walking and on your horse. When walking or riding through forests and towns you gain a true sense of verticality to them. In combat you can no longer see who's behind you and so it becomes more strategic. You have to move to make sure all your enemies are in view or you'll get wailed from behind. Couple all this with improved graphical quality like enhanced textures, shadows and greater draw distances and everything in this game looks amazing. The crowd density has also been increased to populate the streets of the major cities and towns. There's times where I just walk to enjoy the environments and scenery. I wish I could play this game with the hood completely removed all the time just to enjoy the view and the slick movements. Completing a combat sequence with the gory finishers has never felt so satisfying. And for those of you who prefer the original camera, it's still in the game. CDPR added a ton of changes which are completely optional. So everything I mentioned here you can just jump into the settings and change it back to the original option. The next important addition is the quick cast mechanic for your signs. I never knew how much we needed this mechanic to be added until now. Once you've learned the buttons, combat just flows. There's no big wheel to take up the screen and slow time. Because of this it keeps you immersed in the fight. Can you believe that there was a time I actually didn't like the combat in this game? I hated the way Geralt spins in every attack as it causes a slight delay to landing your hits on enemies. Like. Why is he doing this? It's so unnecessary. I had to learn to attack first from further away and now everything about the combat is perfect. The next set of improvements were made to the maps and filtering. A new default map filter hides some of the icons such as question marks and bow icons to reduce clutter on your map screen. These icons can be turned back on at any time if you go into the map and change the toggle to all. 
This aids in player discovery which is so important for open world games. Being able to discover something and being neatly rewarded for it is so much more memorable as to just being told where everything is. There's also an option to hide the minimap and quest objectives when not in combat or using witcher senses. This is great for freeing up more screen space to actually pay attention to the world. I struggled with the map disappearing and I think many others will too. We are so conditioned to look at the map and waypoints now when we are traveling to make sure that we are heading in the right direction. I'd love to be able to just play the game and know where I'm going. Now for me, those are the key changes that makes this game amazing to revisit for returning players. But for you new players out there, you'll get all these amazing conditions as well as experiencing the story, the contracts and the side quests for the first time. You will sink hours and hours into this game and it's because the game is so well written. You have meaningful choices with consequences that don't only just shape the story in the game world, they will stick with you. You will remember some of the choices you make because some of the end results of what you learn can be horrifying, funny or even make you angry. One of the recent choices I made in the game is making me feel guilty and it's kind of making me anxious as I wait to see how it plays out. I have to mention the Bloody Baron quest line as well. It has to be one of the best quest lines in gaming history. I had such a blast playing through it again and learning all the events which led up to his wife and daughter's disappearance. The world of the Witcher translates brilliantly into a video game format as most of the game's design fits perfectly. For example, Witchers being monster hunters works perfectly for contracts. In any other game it may feel as just padding or filler but here with the monster variety and the wonderfully crafted stories through environments and characters makes something as simple as contracts compelling. You'll come across other activities to do in the world of the Witcher besides monster hunting. You can get into a card game called Gwent which was loved so much by fans that it spawned its own spin-off title. You can go treasure hunting and try to find diagrams so you can craft legendary gear and items. Or you can look for ingredients and dabble in a bit of alchemy to create oils, bombs and potions which is always fun. The only criticisms that I have since returning to the game is that I've experienced some performance issues. A few glitches and the game has crashed on me on a few occasions but it has been mostly consistent in its performance. If you are watching this video and you haven't played The Witcher 3 before or you're planning to replay it, I 100% recommend that you do. As one of the best RPG games to ever be made has received quality of life changes that have not only made the game more enjoyable to play, it's made the game feel fresh. To me, it feels like a brand new experience. I'm going to hand it over to you now. What do you enjoy about The Witcher 3? Was it the engaging story with deep choices and consequences? Or was it the sheer variety in the combat and the many ways you can defeat monsters and enemies? Or maybe you're not a fan of The Witcher 3 at all? I want to hear what you have to say in the comment section below. Thank you for sticking around for this one. And if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to drop a like and please subscribe to the channel. My name is Jammer. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram where my handle is JammerTheGamer. But for now, take care everyone and peace until next time.